Welcome back to Racing Avenue for another weekly F1 update. Red Bull has decided to extend their partnership with Sergio Perez until at least 2026. This move was championed by Perez's teammate, Max Verstappen, who expressed his enthusiasm about continuing their successful collaboration. Max stated, It's great news that Checo has signed with the team until 2026, and I am glad to be able to continue with the successful partnership that we have created over the past few years. Rumours had suggested Red Bull considered signing Ferrari's Carlos Sainz, but concerns about team dynamics and the potential for friction between Sainz and Verstappen ultimately led them to stick with Perez. The 2026 rule changes have sparked significant controversy among F1 teams. At the Canadian GP, team bosses are set to meet to address concerns about the new regulations, particularly the active aero systems that are not driver-controlled. This has raised safety and cost concerns with at least two teams threatening to leave F1 if the rules proceed as planned. The new regulations aim to introduce active aerodynamics, eliminate DRS in favour of a manual override mode, and make the cars lighter and more compact. However, the debate over these changes continues to intensify. Adrian Newey, Red Bull's design mastermind, has voiced his dissatisfaction with the upcoming 2026 regulations. Newey criticised the influence of certain manufacturers on these rules, suggesting that the compromises made might not justify the anticipated benefits. I suppose, given that Audi will be participating in 2026, there has been partial success in this regard, but I'm not sure it's worth the overall commitment to what could be achieved. The reality is that the manufacturers come and go with the exception of Ferrari, said Newey. With Newey set to leave Red Bull in 2025, speculation is rife about his next move, with several teams reportedly vying for his expertise. Red Bull's Pierre Wash discussed the team's preparations for the 2026 season, highlighting the significant challenges ahead. We will be able to work on the aero side only in the beginning of next year, then we are preparing ourselves. The engine is a big challenge also for us, and it's looking promising. Red Bull is set to produce their own engines in partnership with Ford. The reigning champions have also seen intense competition from rival teams this year, after a dominant season last year winning all but one race in the calendar year. Can Red Bull maintain their dominance with the new 2026 regulations? Aston Martin is in crisis again, struggling to unlock performance just as they did last season. Team owner Lawrence Stroll has issued an ultimatum to the team. With Dan Fallows under pressure and potential changes in the technical team, the future looks uncertain for Aston Martin. Rumours suggest after Newey declined Aston's offer, the team has now turned to Ferrari's technical director, Enrico Cardili. Cardile's impressive work has been overseen by Fred Vasseur, who is widely considered responsible for Ferrari's upward trend. Can Aston Martin turn their fortunes around, or are they destined for another tough season? Lewis Hamilton has criticised Pirelli for the minuscule operating window of the current F1 tyres. Hamilton suggested after the Miami Grand Prix last month that he had never known F1 tyres to have as minuscule an operating window as they do right now. Honestly, it's probably the most frustrating thing, said the seven-time world champion. Back in the day when you had a much bigger working window, this is definitely my least favourite. Pirelli's chief engineer, Simone Berra, responded by attributing the issue to both the tyres and car setups. Part of it is the tyre, but part of it is as well the car, the suspension, and how the car is exploiting the compound performance. So, it's both factors. Do you agree with Hamilton's assessment of the current F1 tyres? Ferrari is reportedly considering a major shift in their car design for 2025 to maximise Lewis Hamilton's impact when he joins the team. With significant progress already this year, Ferrari aims to challenge Red Bull and McLaren more effectively by adopting a new design philosophy. We have already given the go-ahead to the 2025 car. Furthermore, work has already started some time ago on the 2026 power unit, said Vasseur. After years of doing its own thing, Ferrari could be poised for a switch to pull rod front suspension similar to Red Bull and McLaren. Will Ferrari's new approach for 2025 be the game-changer they need? George Russell has expressed confidence in Mercedes' preparations for the 2026 regulations, particularly their new power unit. With significant changes coming to the turbo-hybrid units, Russell feels the team is ideally placed for the new rules. 
So on the engine side, I think we're feeling very confident for that era. The turbo hybrid units are set to undergo their most significant changes since their adoption in 2014. In 2026, the MGU-H will be eliminated and beefed up electrical systems will be introduced to increase power for drivers. Additionally, major work is planned for the chassis. Can Mercedes regain their dominance with the new 2026 engine? James Allison from Mercedes has suggested that Red Bull's recent upgrades might have backfired, causing their recent struggles. I guess as soon as there's a decent range of cornering speeds, they'll be useful again. But it does look as if their upgrade was a downgrade. That makes life hard, because the moment you stop trusting your tools, you have to backtrack and you lose loads of time. Red Bull has lost two of the last three races, with Imola being an exception thanks to Max Verstappen fending off a late charge from Lando Norris and McLaren, raising questions about their development direction and the effectiveness of their new parts. Do you think Red Bull's upgrades have hurt their performance? Thanks for tuning in to Racing Avenue. Make sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. What topics do you want to hear about next? Drop your suggestions in the comments and we'll see you in the next video.